maybe we ask our we ask um, our new classmate. Oh my god. Um, has it, has it, <laughs> Hi, literally. What do you think, right? <laughs> I don't even know what long shot drift is. <laughs> It has been 15 years since I was last in secondary school, but here I am now at Compassville Secondary School to sit through a geography class and kind of see how lessons have evolved over the years. Back then I took combined humanities, so I have some rough idea of geographical concepts, but beyond subject matter, things have definitely changed for students now. We are well past the era of um, textbooks and whiteboards. Students are given laptops and tablets and there's greater emphasis on technology in, in lessons. Um, in fact, I just heard that we'll be using virtual reality goggles to look at some of Singapore's coastal protection features. So I'm really excited about that and looking forward. Um, I'm also interested to see how I interact with these students who are 15 years younger than me. Uh, mind you, they are Singapore's next generation. So I really want to know their views and opinions and how these have changed over the years. So we will start off by exploring the dynamic nature of East Coast Park. Alright? This is actually our first time going out for field work because during sec 1 and sec 2, due to the uh, pandemic, mm. we did not have a chance to go. So mm. this is our first year doing this as well. Oh, okay. So this is the actual field site that you will be visiting later. So we will be looking specifically at this J-shaped breakwater. What is the purpose of this particular sandbar right, that joins my mainland to my breakwater? Maybe we ask our our new classmate. Um, has it? Has it? Oh my god. What do you think? <laughs> Hi, literally. <laughs> what do you think? Where is it? <laughs> so basically, the swash and backwash is here. And okay. We've very uh, much helped by <laughs> my classmate. <laughs> and she said it will help to protect the sediments. In it will sense. help to protect, it will help to yeah. retain the sediments. Yeah. Right, retain the sediments, right? Is that what, is that what you're going for? Yeah. Can I get you guys, okay, to okay, open up your boxes first? Okay, me take out your VR goggles. Have you all used this before? Uh, oh, for job as well. Yeah. Okay. Press play first, then you click on the cardboard mode. Uh, this one, yeah. Yes. All right. Oh, oh wow. Back in the days, uh, uh, as was mentioned, right, uh, use of textbook, very prevalent. Use of whiteboard, very prevalent. Uh, today, we are still using textbooks and whiteboards, but we are, it's accompanied by you know, use of mobile phones, use of personal learning devices. So uh, I think the students have a lot more opportunity to interact with the teacher. Now, you know, student is shy, what do you do? You can get the student to key in their responses on an online platform like Padlet, and you can get whole class engagement as well. It was um, a very immersive experience as well with the VR headset, as well as interactive. Rather than just writing down the notes that our teacher gave us, we had a more hands-on experience with the VR to feel how it's like um, to be virtually at East Coast Park. You're learning real-life events as well as geography and integrated together is quite interesting. Our reporting time, as I told you guys, is 2pm at your own classroom. So I just finished the first part of my geography class and I must say I was really impressed. The VR uh, was immersive, the teachers were engaging and the students were responsive. Uh, in fact, students were using their laptops and smartphones in class and we were learning about really uh, relevant and localised topics like climate change. Definitely a huge difference from 15 years back. I did, um, however, have some difficulties with the geographical terms like uh, longshore drift and groins. My classmates were quick to help me out and share their notes with me. <laughs> about my pay. <laughs> Don't ask me to compare with your Hello. teacher. <laughs> I, uh, see, when you reach our age, then you can start to last, but you must earn your dues first. Right? Three, four. <laughs> He's enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Bye. So group one, what is your what is your mean wave frequency? About well, 15. 15 is it? Yeah. Okay. So who's gonna be my thrower? Okay. Okay, never mind. So Farah, where where do you land? Ah, just point it there. Actually, we are we are we are observing something. I'm not sure if you notice. Sediment transportation. So if you think about it, right, my orange is my sediment, right? It's my pebble, it's my sand. Okay, so uh, someone has to record, huh? Now, eight to ten is seven. Yep. When we are coming in real life and looking at the breakwaters, I get to understand more about how this breakwater works with our teachers, Mr. Ang's explanation. I find it very enjoyable and interesting, you know. It's like better to see it in real life so it understand better and able to like hang out with friends, you know, while like learning about new stuff in geography. I feel like this is a good memory for us to have like moving forward in the future. I think it was fun. We had to do hands-on activity for the first time because of the pandemic. We are looking at what Singapore is actually doing to actually protect the coastal and we get to see like if it is working or not. Uh, we wanted to evolve our field learning. So in the past, uh, there were field trips. Uh, students learn about uh, farms, about development, about mountains, volcanoes. Uh, we wanted to evolve this practice to have a bit more interaction and engagement. Uh, most importantly, we wanted students to actually uh, investigate issues, uh, to collect data, to understand that uh, knowledge is not uh, from the books, but constructed by people. I'm officially done with geography class here at East Coast Park and I can say that it was a class like no other. Exhausting, but exhilarating. I have sand in my shoes, seawater between my toes, and a good tan from spending two hours under the sun. In fact, we had to investigate the effectiveness of this breakwater beside me as a coastal protection measure. And to do that, we counted the waves, um, saw how oranges drifted in the sea, and collected sand samples. I can honestly say that when it comes to learning, nothing beats doing it yourself. It was an eye-opener for me to see how these lessons have evolved over the years with the use of technology and all these experiential elements. But while there were a lot of stark differences, uh, there were a lot of similarities as well. Uh, for instance, there were the usual jokers at the back of the class whom the teacher always had to call out. And there was the expected sluggishness from students and the, as the sun started bearing down on the sand. Um, for me, it was nice to have that sense of familiarity uh, in a sea of change on my first day back in school. But for now, I have to say that class is dismissed. Thank <laughs> you.